Hi guys, Debbie here. Um, I was asked to do a tutorial on how to make seamless patterns in Silhouette Studio. And the first thing I want to do is for those of you who don't um, know how to even use the seamless patterns, um, I just wanted to show you real quick. So you could take any shape. So like we could do a square or you can even do some text, <clears throat> excuse me, in Silhouette here. And over here in the fill pattern, or the fill panel, rather, if you click on the little, I don't know, the little palette, <clears throat> you could, I, everybody knows how you could just fill it with another color. But if you come over here, we have gradients and we have fill patterns. So there's some that are already loaded in Silhouette, and you can grab any of those. They just come default when you install it or if you have one of your own patterns, you could stick it in there. Um, and that works for both texts and shapes. Um, but if you have a pattern that you purchased somewhere, um, the way you would load that in so that it shows up as an available, <clears throat> excuse me, an available pattern to use is you go up to your library. Now I don't use my library for anything but patterns. Um, I've had it crash before and it was a nightmare and so I don't save anything in my library, but if you want to have a pattern available in your fill pattern window, you go into your library and you grab wherever your pattern is. I just opened up this folder so that I can grab some that I've downloaded other places and show you. Um, but you take the file and you drag it right into your patterns folder, or if it's open like this, you could just drop it here but you need to get it into the patterns folder in your library. And then once it's in there, you can come over here back to the design panel and it'll show up as an available pattern. So I just wanted to cover that real quick um, just because some people don't know how to even use patterns. If you don't wanna make one, you bought one, um, how you can load them in. But we're going to go into how to make your own seamless pattern in Silhouette. Now I'll be honest, <clears throat> I've never done this until today. Um, I've, I've used Illustrator and I've used Photoshop. Um, Silhouette is a little bit um, different on how you do it and um, I wasn't sure if it would even be possible. So <clears throat> I was asked and so I played around with it this morning and I figured it out. So I'm going to show you how to make your own seamless pattern. So chances are your uh, workspace looks like this when you first open it um, or however you used it last. But um, if you're using it for your cutting, your, your cameo for cutting, then you're going to have a mat open. And a lot of times people have grids for the inches and stuff like that. So I wanted to start with it set up like this so I could show you how you need to have it set up in order to make your own pattern. And... I should have mentioned this earlier, but the way that I found to do it, you can't do it without having either the um, either one of the upgraded versions where you could save it as a ping file, um, or even a JPEG would work too. Uh, but you you can't use an SVG or not that you could save it that in the free version either. But the free version only lets you save as a studio file, and that doesn't work. We need to save it outside of silhouette and then reload it like I just showed you with another pattern. So if you have the free version, I'm sorry, I don't know another way how to make it work for you accurately. Uh, but if you have the paid upgraded version, I have business edition, <clears throat> this is how you would do it. So you need to start out with a perfect square without the mat, without the grids, just a perfect square of where you're working. So we're gonna go to the page setup and I'm just going to do five inches by five inches just so I have a nice square that I can remember what size it is and whatever. Under the cutting mat, go to none. On the uh, grid tab here, we're going to uncheck show grid. So what we're working with right here is a five inch by five inch clean white mat. So I'm going to zoom in. <clears throat> and we're gonna start laying things into this. So basically what we need to do 
is we're going to create what we want the pattern to be. And we're going to have it overlap a little bit on the top and on the left hand side. And then we will copy and move it over to the right and the bottom side to create the seamless look. So it's not just a bunch of things in a straight line. You don't have a like a clean um, grid showing up in your pattern. You want it to look kind of random. And so the overlapping and staggering is what will do that for us. So you can use anything you want. You can even use SVGs in here to create your pattern. Um, I am going to go grab some of our own art um, <laughs> just because I've been thinking about chickens because we just finished up a whole bunch of chickens yesterday. So I was thinking it would be fun to make one with chickens. So I'm going to drag in a couple of chickens here. Okay, and then I thought it would be fun to take some flowers or something to kind of stagger around with it. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to take these and we're going to make a cute little pattern out of it. If you want your pattern to just be transparent or white, you could just leave it. Um, it it'll be transparent and unless you save it as a JPEG. Um, you could save it as a JPEG with a white background and then you'd have white. But um, I'm going to show you how to do it with a colored background. So we're gonna just drop in a box, but we want this box to be exactly the same size as the artboard here. So we're gonna go over here to the <clears throat> transform panel and click on the little scale icon here. And I'm gonna go five inches by five inches and then we'll go over here to fill and we're gonna pick a color so I want to do let's do that that works um, now we're gonna click on the line just to make the line on it uh, transparent so that doesn't show up either and then we're going to go back over here to the transform panel and we're gonna hit center on the page so it drops it right where we want it and then I'm going to right click and we're going to hit send it back so it's the background. So now what you need to do is just start placing things where you want them. Okay, so the seamless part that is um, pretty important here is you need to make it so that the top half of this chicken is perfectly placed over this one so that it's seamless. So what I found to do here is we need to duplicate that so there's two there that are in exactly the same spot and then we're going to move the other one down exactly five inches. Now if you did this on three inches or ten inches or whatever, you can use whatever artboard size you want, but you have to remember what size you chose because we're going to use that over and over again. So this is for the five inch square that I'm using. So you grab your chicken and I'm going to open up the uh, layers panel here. Oh my goodness, I've got a lot in this one. Find the one that's highlighted and you're going to hit copy and then just click in there again and hit paste. So I'm going to hit undo, but just to show you, now there's two chickens perfectly placed here. I don't know why this likes to move. It drives me nuts. Um, so I'm going to hit undo so that goes back. So there's two chickens. So we're going to click off and then click on it so you know you're grabbing the top chicken and the bottom chicken is staying there. And then when you go over here to the transform panel, this little thing with the four squares on it, that's a move panel, which I'll be completely honest, I had no idea that existed until this morning when I was trying to figure out how to do the seamless patterns and so what. Um, I've never used the move panel, but I needed to move this exactly five inches down so it's placed perfectly to be seamless. So I found that we have a little move panel here. So click on the top chicken that's in exactly the same place. We're going to type in five for your distance and then hit the down arrow because we're trying to move it down to the bottom of this to create the seamless look. So 
down and it moves it exactly where it needs to be. So like see the little space right here? We need it to pick up right where it left off. So we're gonna do the same thing with this one. Come back, I don't know why this layers panel likes to float. I did something that I shouldn't have done. But we're gonna come back here, you click on here. You can see the, the chicken shape. We're gonna right click and hit copy. Right click and hit paste. So it drops another one right over the top. Deselect it, grab the one on top back to the transform panel, move, move to the right, five inches. So you see what we're doing here? We just have to move everything the same distance so that it overlaps the edge. Stupid layers panel, go back. And then we're gonna grab it and carefully move them over. So now if you want to move any of these around that aren't on the edge, you can do that. So I'm going to see there's kind of a weird gap here. So you have to be careful not to move any of them that are on the edge because they're very strategically placed. But I want to move some of this around just a little bit because that, that just turned into kind of a weird a weird placement that I don't like. But really, I like it when, when they look pretty random, you know? Except that's not random right there. Let's flip-flop these. Something like that. There. I think that looks good. Fun little random pattern that doesn't really make sense, but for the video, it serves its purpose. purpose. So, um, I'm gonna move these stupid panels that keep bouncing around. So here's the important part. We have it all set up on the artboard here, how we want it. They're all very carefully placed to overlap the edges how we want it. Now this is why you need to have the, the business or the designer, what is designers the next one down from this? You need to have one of the upgraded versions. So we're gonna go to file, save as, save to hard drive, um, I'm just going to do this on my desktop video pattern format. Um, I think you need to have the most recent update in order to get the ping file as an option. You can use a JPEG, um, but the ping file to me looked a little bit better when I was playing with it. But ping file, hit OK, 300 dots per inch. Come on, keyboard. There we go. Nope. Okay. And then we're going to hit transparent background. Now, I did a test with the default 150 dots per inch, and a line showed up. So make sure that you do at least 300. I really don't think it's necessary to go bigger than that, um, but 300 DPI is a good resolution, and it turned out just fine. And then I'm checking the transparent background, not that it matters that much because we actually have a box there, so it's not going to be transparent. But when I was testing it, the seam was a little bit less noticeable. Um, there, were, It was being kind of weird. I, I had to play around with different settings because no matter what I did, the seam was showing up. So this is what I did to make it so that the seam wasn't there. There wasn't a little line. So 300 dots per inch, transparent background. I'm gonna hit save. Now we're going to go into the library and load it just like I showed you at the beginning of the video. So we're gonna go, now you could drag and drop it if you want, but it's on my desktop. So I'm gonna show you this way. Go to file, library, import to library. We're gonna go to the desktop. Oh, I'm already on the desktop. Video pattern, hit okay. Now this, when you do the import into, it drops it into user designs. So from there, see if we click around, user designs, you drag it into patterns. Or I could have just browsed to the desktop and drag it, drop, dragged and drop it in, but I wanted to show you that in case you wanted to do the import way. So now the one we just made is in the patterns folder. So we're gonna go back to design. I'm just going to open up a new window so that I'm not messing with that because I'd like to save it. And then if you ever want to come back and edit it, you know, if you save it as a studio file, you can do that. 
So we're going to just make a little shape here and I'm gonna show you the pattern we just made. So we go over to your fill pattern thing, scroll down, and there you go. So let me get rid of that line because it drives me crazy. And we're going to make this a little bit bigger so I can show you up close. Here is the advanced options. Oh, now I'm underlined. Back to fill. Advanced options. You can go down here to scale and zoom out and see. Now see how some of those lines show up? I haven't figured out how to make that perfect at some zoom levels. Um, this is why I was playing with all the different file formats this morning. Um, it seemed like no matter what I did, um, certain scales would show them up, would show up those little lines. Oops, I'm going to click. Um, but then others were just fine. You know, like this is obviously repeating and there's no line there. But then, um, let's see if I can get them to show up. The other weird thing is if you zoom in, they go away. I, I don't know why it does that because obviously it's seamless or else we'd see it at other other places but this one if you don't see it like this then you're safe so anyway that's how you would do a seamless pattern in silhouette studio so hopefully that makes sense and if I missed anything feel free to ask and I will do my best to follow up and figure it out so anyway, have fun.